Morning, it's Vaughan at westcoatbellpottery.ca in uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, I have a quick project here I'm going to do, which is a modification on something else, but well, kind of like combining two things together. Um, I make black mugs that I then do graffito carving through, um, the black and white pieces, you can see videos of how I've done that. Uh, and then I make flower painted mugs. Um, and I decided they're on white clay and it's white background with flowers painted on them. Why don't I try painting flowers on black mugs just to try something that's so similar that you I would have thought of it already. But, but anyway, here we go. I'm going to show you how to do that. So you need to prepare and that's so simple. Throw a mug, dip it in in black slip or paint black slip on it, spray black slip on it, whatever you want to do. This is black slip which is B mix basically. Uh, and you can, I also have a recipe that I've given in previous res uh, videos, which is 40% uh, uh, ball clay, OM4, 20% EPK, kaolin, 20% silica, 10% potash feldspar, and 10% frit 3110. That gives you a slip as well. And that's a slip that can be applied onto things that are not bone dry, but fairly dry. Whereas regular slip, you have to apply to soft clay. And that's always a problem because, you know, you can soften your pot so much it will collapse. So I use the slip recipe, which is Robin Hopper's, which I just gave out. Um, so this has had um, two coats of that. So it's a nice, rich black after it's after the firing. And I am going to paint um, my usual flower painting technique. If I can get my brush. Make sure you've got a brush that it's got a nice, it's a Japanese paintbrush and they're all over the place. You can buy those on Amazon now, you can buy them everywhere. But make sure it's one that the hairs are in fairly good shape and the point is nice. Um, and that's why I'm messing around with my point here, just to make sure that it's got no dry clay left in it. Because sometimes when you store them overnight, there'll be a little bit of slip left. And it's and just making sure there's no lumps there right at the end. Okay, and then I'm going to paint with uh, this underglaze first, then I'm going to paint with this underglaze second, followed by this underglaze, I got the numbers rubbed off that, but it's green mist. This is LU, no, this is CC174, this is LUG21, this is LUG something, it's green mist. And this is UG68, I think it means LUG, but I'm not sure, it says U underglaze, yeah, it must be just UG. Oh, the others were UG as well, that's right, they're not. Amoco, I think, is the LUG series. Just use your Japanese brush strokes, which means spontaneous, but you get what you get. You have to be a little bit kind of um, aggressive, I guess, as you're doing it. Just feel confident, I guess. So you're gonna mess up the first couple, but after that, you're gonna be fine. So you don't want to go slow like this. You want to flick it and just kind of go back and flick. Press hard, press light, whatever you want to do. So there we got a nice under coating of that darker green. Then we'll go with the other one, which is UG21. Rinse your brush. If you don't want to contaminate the underglaze, I don't really worry too much about that because they're all green and there's so little left on the brush, but you might want to be you know, a bit more careful. I like surprises. Anyway, and then the same again. Just spontaneous. Don't worry about pressing light or hard, just do it randomly. So we've got that one next. Then we go in UG green mist because so the numbers rubbed off. And these mugs are not dry, but they're just past what I would call leather hard. So 
So we've got three coats, nothing running yet. And this is the lightest. I'm basically working light to dark. I've got a sponge there that I drag the brush across after I rinse it to, so there's not too much water left on it. And this is the lightest green. Now it's still these haven't dried that much, so I'm being a little careful now because if I build up too much, it might make a dribble and go down. So I'm doing lighter strokes with this one, so we don't get too much in that. So the effect of lots of grass, basically. This one looks a bit drier on this side, so I can go a little heavier. And that's your undercoat. So I'll set that aside now for 10, 15 minutes, paint a couple more, um, and, uh, and then we'll paint some flowers on there. Now, as you can see, I decided to paint uh, six at a time uh, with the dark green and then the middle green, then the lighter green, and then the light green. And, and that way they'd all be a little drier each time by the time I get to the next color. So there wouldn't be the chance of them dribbling down and running, which only I think one of them did a little bit. Um, but we've now got a nice base coat and I'm going to start painting with flowers. Um, and I've shown this in a different video. Um, uh, so you could actually look up my other flake flower painting videos in my history. Go to the videos and look up, just click on videos and you'll see 150 videos. Too many to look at, I'm sure. So, um, but, um, but anyway, um, this is a purple. No, no, this is the violet and then I have a purple. And this is a velvet underglaze. So it's very thick in this jar. They sell this stuff so thick. And then you can just water it down, but maybe that's better than buying water, I guess. So, so I'm just scooping it out with a wide paintbrush, and then I can actually uh, water it down. Yeah, whenever you buy products with water, and I guess you want the least amount of water as possible, because you can add it at your own studio. And then I just spray some water in. Don't use a nice brush to stir it up. Take care of your brushes. And brushes are not all the same. I mean, I, I buy Japanese brushes, you know, but <laughs> loads of them, and uh, it's rare to find one that's just really good. Um, so I just keep buying them. They're cheap enough to buy, and then okay, occasionally I'll get one that's really good, and I take care of it. So I'm just making sure there's no lumps in the underglaze by mixing it. And when you feel like you've got a good consistency, one that will stick nice and thickly but won't actually uh, run down then you can start painting and it's i'm using the same brush that i like i said this brush is one of my good brushes that i've had and it's actually broken in the past so i've taped it together because it's so nice um, and then you simply go on the piece and use the natural brush shape to get your loop in or whatever flowers you want to paint. And just be sort of careful not to build up too much so that it actually runs down. So I'm touching, I'm not squeezing the brush, I'm just touching it to the surface. If you notice, the, this has got such a nice point on it, but it, it squishes out a little bit to a nice round shape. So it's a perfect brush for doing these 
And of course the other brushes will have their shapes. But you might want to try square ended brushes and fan brushes to actually get what you're looking for. Underglazes also um, have to be applied two or three coats depending on the type of the underglaze. And so I might have to go over with other colors over the top of this. I tend not to do the same color each time. I like to add another color, but I've got a purple to go over this violet. Good, eh? And it's not like I'm doing some really careful intricate painting, I'm simply dabbing the brush repetitively using the shape of the brush. That's kind of nice just to leave it on your own, but I will never leave it alone. <laughs> I always go too far. Anyway, I'm going to paint the rest and put you on high speed now. The next color I'm going to use is an Amoco underglaze, which is LUG 55 and it's purple. Um, and this one is in good shape. I don't need to stir it up too much. So <clears throat> every one of these now has the uh, violet painted all the way around. And now I'm going to use this purple, which is, I think will be a slightly darker color. I've done it in the past and it has a sort of, it's, it's a more of a reddish, purple actually, but, uh, but that could be the glaze I use over the top that changes it a little bit because uh, ghostly borate big glazes tend to change some of the purples. Anyway, so what I do is I'm simply just going to go over each one of these with a slightly smaller mark, more in the center. And by doing this over the top here, it's kind of like painting two coats of this underglaze, but it'll give it a little bit more of a, a depth to the painting. I'm not trying to get exactly on top of each mark either. And the brush, just lightly touching, gives you that shape of the brush itself. And it tends to run that big that down the th thickness of the brush, so you've got to scrape it back down. Okay, so that's that. I've got uh, one more layer on this, these to do, but I'm going to do the rest of them now. Um, so I'll put you on fast motion again. OK, 
Okay, the last thing I do to these, because I like purple to have some yellow, <clears throat> I always think purple and yellow pop, but, is I just use a fan brush to create the effect of like some sort of pollen or like some little extra thing right at the end of the flower. And of course I could go all the way down. So I'm just creating this kind of fan sort of fuzzy bit. And this whole thing has been fairly loosely painted. <clears throat> I think the yellow at just adds a little bit to it um, and it may fade out a little bit. Um, but, um, but you know, there's other things you could do at this point. I mean, I've, in the past I've used this paintbrush, um, which is to create like little stems going down. Um, so I could do that again. I could try and show you on one of them. But you don't want to, um, I don't know. I just, it, it's a, it's a matter of choice, but what you prefer, I suppose. But, but you, I like this brush. I, this was a cheap brush too, just to kind of give the, it, it, I, I feel like I don't have to do this because it simply gets it even busier in the painted kind of line. So it gives it a little feeling like you've got, you can see the stem of the flower as well. Um, but that's it. It's just going to get a clear glaze put over the top of this. I'll fire these to, this is B-Mix 5, which I will fire to cone 4 um, with a clear glaze over the top. Um, and I'll show you what they look like in just a minute. I have the flower mugs that uh, were shown in this video. Uh, and uh, a few other things, Nova Scotia Mist series, which is a foggy glaze I use on uh, silhouettes, and uh, some flower plants, uh, some flower sinks. All right, so let's have a little look at these. This is a cone four with 11 minutes soak and then a natural cool, so it's a very inexpensive firing to do um, compared to all my long soak firings that I do. And this is a sink, oh, painted in the style of the flower mugs you saw in this video uh, over a white background, which is the way I normally do this. Um, and then with a green rim and base, obviously. Um, so I sold three of this uh, design last year, so I've just remade three for the coming season. One's out of the kiln already, and this one is just out. These are all Nova Scotia Mist. And this is my clear transparent glaze with 1% cobalt and I think about 7% rutile in it, um, which makes it form these foggy crystals instead of being a transparent glaze. Um, and, uh, and I call it Nova Scotia Mist because it has a foggy appeal. See, these light blue areas would normally come out white with a dark blue around them. And with that glaze, it comes out like this. So no need to go on to all of these too much, but there's one of my whale pieces. So it looks like they're in the deep ocean. So it was a, a nice title to put on these, Nova Scotia Mist. People seem to like that. I could call these ones foggy bottoms, anyway. But um, I think naming things is quite fun sometimes because um, people when they order these they'll just use that name these are all the same just different stencils it's interesting when it's close to the elements it goes like that and when it's away from the elements it goes like that that's that whole thing here's one away from the elements close to the elements so the crystals 
only form away from the elements because maybe it cools a little bit slower because this is a natural cool. If I cooled this really slow, it would be almost not possible to see the silhouettes. So I just let it cool naturally. I didn't have any of these left, so I figured I'd make a lot. I have a bunch out in just blue and white, and now I've got the Nova Scotia Mist ones. We're having another big snowstorm tonight. Um, it's already snow covered. We've got about four or five inches the other day, and now we're getting, so that's what, uh, 10, 15 centimeters. This is the next layer down. There's another one of those sinks. This is a smaller version. Um, only about maybe an inch and a half, uh, four centimeters smaller than the other one. But it's the same painting like lupins, which are well known in Nova Scotia. And the outside is white because it may actually be set as a drop in. I have a little overlap here, which you could actually cut the hole big enough. So it sits with this just above the counter, or you could actually have it totally above the counter. The rest of those pieces, here is the same design with a clear glaze on. This is identically made to the Nova Scotia Mist one, which is, that's what the difference that Rutile will do. Rutile and cobalt in this glaze, and this glaze is just clear. And this one is the one in the video. So, um, so I was trying to see what it would look like if you put it over a black background instead of a white. I actually like that. It's rich. So the purples stand out much better Oh, than I imagine they would, and the green has sort of receded more, which is why I think it's nicer, because the green doesn't impose on the purples as you see in the white version of this. Uh, so that's, and the rest of this layer is the same as the one down below, uh, one above. And then the bottom of the kiln here is the same silhouettes in blue and white, and a few, no, it's just flowers in blue and white. So here's two more of those mugs. So I've got six of these all together. Um, the blue and white mugs and the Nova Scotia mugs sell for 34 a piece. And these ones will be probably about 69 is my guess in Canadian dollars. But they've turned out really good.